Hello everyone and welcome back. From the previous session itself, we have started our journey of learning about the arithmetic group of instructions. In this session, we are going to learn about the instruction types ADCR and ACID8. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will learn about the instruction type ADCR. Thereafter, we will learn about the instruction type ACID8. So let's begin with the first instruction type, ADCR. Now coming to the instruction type ADCR, it stands for add with carry the contents of R to accumulator. So we are talking about all the GPRs along with the accumulator register. And since we are considering capital R, in the previous session I told you, when we consider capital R, we also include the memory element which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So the contents of R will be added to the accumulator's content along with carry. Now after the operation is done, the result of the addition will also be stored inside the accumulator. Now you might be wondering, what is the need of adding the contents of R to the accumulator with carry? For this, let me show you an illustration. Now we the users, we might need to add multi-byte numbers using the 8085 microprocessor. Now with an example, you will be able to understand this in a better way. Say we would like to add the numbers 4556H and 33F3H. Notice, we are using four-digit hexadecimal numbers for the addition. Now, if you remember, two-digit hexadecimal number in binary is 8-bit. Therefore, how many bits will it be in binary for four-digit hexadecimal numbers? Think about it. Each of the digit of hexadecimal number are considered to be four bits in binary. So, four of them will give us 16 bits. Now I'll get back to the technicalities, but before that, let me perform the addition. If we add 6 with 3, the result is going to be 9. Now adding 5 with F, that is the largest symbol in the hexadecimal series, we will get 4 as the sum, that is 1 less than 5, and a carry will be generated, right? Now adding 1 with 5 will give us 6, and adding 6 with 3 will again give us 9. What about 4 plus 3? The result is going to be 7. Now focus on this addition. If we employ the 8085 microprocessor to perform this addition, at first, this part's addition will be done. That is, 56 will be added with F3 and the result is going to be 49. Thereafter, the addition of the second part will happen. That is, 45 will be added with 33. But remember, when we added these two, the carry was generated. So we also need to cover all these three. That is, the urgent, the addend, as well as the carry. And for this, we need the instruction ADCR. Now can you tell me, size-wise, in which category this instruction type will fall into? Well, it is one byte long instruction. Now before I show you the illustration of how this instruction type works, let me tell you about the different instructions of this type. Well, I believe you already know them since we are considering capital R. The instructions are going to be ADCA. Then in place of A, if we replace that with all the different GPRs, that is, starting from B till L, and thereafter, if we consider the memory element, which will be pointed by the HL register pair, these eight instructions are there of ADCR type. Now what these will do? If you consider ADCE, one of the operands will be inside the accumulator, for sure. And another operand, since E is mentioned, it will be stored inside the E register. And along with that, the carry will also be considered as 1. Let me show you how this addition, 
Specifically, the addition of the most significant two digits of these two four-digit hexadecimal numbers will be handled by the 8085 microprocessor. If you notice, here the origin is 45. And let's say within the accumulator register, we have got the value 45. Now the add in is 33. And suppose within the GPRB, that is the general purpose register B, we have got the value 33. Now we also have the carry, right? It came out from the previous edition. So within the flags register, the carry flag is going to be set. And this flag will be set after this addition has already been processed by the microprocessor. Now if we execute the instruction ADCB, the result that is 79 will be stored inside the accumulator register. Now this is an addition operation and due to this, all the elements of the flags register is to be affected. Let me show you how they will be after the operation has been performed. If you notice, there were no carry this time which was generated. Therefore, the carry flag will be reset. Now what about the P or parity flag? Notice the content of the accumulator. We have got 7, 9. 7 is 0, 1. So 3 ones from 7. 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. So 2 more ones from 9. Cumulatively, we have got 3 plus 2. That is 5 ones. And 5 is an odd number. And the parity flag is to be set only if within the content of the accumulator, we have even number of ones. So this time, parity flag will be reset. Now what about the AC or auxiliary carry flag? If you notice, from the addition of the least significant two digits, no carry came out. Remember, this is the carry which came from this part. It's not the carry from the least significant digits. And since we didn't have any carry from the addition of the least significant digits, the auxiliary carry will also be reset to zero. Now what about Z flag? The contents of the accumulator is not all zeros, so this will also be reset. Now let's talk about the sign flag. If you notice, within the accumulator, we have got 7, 9. And 7 is 0, 3, 1. So the most significant bit of the accumulator is zero. Therefore, the sign flag will also be reset to zero. Correct? So this is how the ADCR or specifically ADCB with the contents 4, 5 and 3, 3 will work and based on the outcome that is 7, 9 which is inside the accumulator register, the contents of the flags register are going to be affected. Do remember, ADC stands for Add with Carry. And with R, that is the capital R, we are including all the registers, including the GPRs, the accumulator, and the memory element which will be pointed by the HL register pair. Additionally, ADCR falls under the one byte long instructions category. So that was all about the instruction type ADCR. Let's now learn about the instruction type ACID8. Now coming to the instruction type ACID8, ACI stands for Add with Carry Immediate to Accumulator. Basically the same thing that we are going to do in this case just we did in case of ADCR. However, this time the other operand, we will provide that in immediate addressing mode. And one of the operand will definitely be inside the accumulator. Now let's decode the instruction ACID8. I already told you ACI is add with carry immediate. Coming to the second part that is D8, it stands for the data of 8 bit. Now this data of 8 bit, we are sending that in immediate mode. So this instruction falls under the immediate addressing mode. Now can you tell me? in which group size-wise this instruction will fall under. Observe, ACI will occupy 8 bits. Additionally, we are sending 8 bits of data. So cumulatively, this entire instruction is going to fall under the 2 byte long instructions category. Now let's get into the working of this.
Say we would like to perform the operation F1H plus 12H and along with that we are going to consider the carry. Now for this, let's suppose the value F1 we have kept it inside the accumulator register. Now we also need to consider the carry. So for that, say the carry flag is already set. Now the other operand that is 1, 2, we will send that via the instruction itself. Notice, we are sending the operand 1, 2 in immediate addressing through the instruction ACI 1, 2, H. Now let me perform the addition. 1 plus 1, 2 and plus 2 will give us the result 4. Now what about F plus 1? F is the largest one digit symbol of hexadecimal. So F plus 1 will give us the result 1, 0. Now after the operation has been performed, the result that is the 8 bit result will be stored inside the accumulator register. Now since we have one carry in here, so the carry flag is also set. Now what about the P flag or parity flag? Notice the content of the accumulator. 0, 4. 0 is 4 zeros in binary. And what about 4? 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So clearly, in the accumulator, we have got a single 1. And 1 is an odd number. So the parity flag will be reset. It will only be set if the accumulator contains even number of 1s. But that not seems to be the case in here. Now what about AC flag? Did we get any carry which was coming from the addition of the least significant digits? We didn't, right? So the auxiliary carry flag will also be reset. Let's now check what will be the status of the Z flag. The contents of the accumulator is not all zeros. So this will also be reset. Finally, the sign flag. If you notice, in the content of the accumulator, we have got zero as the most significant hexadecimal digit, which in binary is going to be four zeros. So clearly, the most significant bit of the accumulator is also zero. Therefore, the sign bit will also be reset. So this is how this instruction ACI 12H will work if within the accumulator we have got another operand that is F1. Remember, this instruction falls under the two byte long category and ACI means add with carry immediate. So that was all about the ACI D8 instruction type. So in this session we covered the topics instruction type ADCR. This instruction falls under the one byte long instructions category. We also covered the instruction type ACI D8 which falls under the two bytes long instruction category. Alright people, that will be all for this session. From the next session onwards, we are going to learn about the instructions which are related to the subtraction operation. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.